Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Anthony Carla. Thank you for joining us. We start today's show in Sichuan, China. When the May 12th earthquake struck, it was the middle of the school day. A great many teachers acted with enormous bravery to protect their students, including Jiang Zhijun, who safely evacuated 72 children from the Law Sui Middle School dormitory. In fact, Jiang's own eight-month-old son, his wife, and wife's parents were also at the school, but he did not have time to take care of them. As a teacher, Zhang says his first consideration was to look after his students. As for the children, as well as being eternally grateful to their guardian angel, they have also learned to appreciate their school books a lot more than they used to. Amid the chaos of Sichuan's great earthquake, nearly all surviving school children lost their books. By August, when school restarted, many new texts had been found. Now tidily stacked away in a drawer, they will not again be easily taken for granted. Once snatched away, the importance of this often forgotten resource became clear to all. Each book now shares a secret, precious value for these earthquake survivors. We have just turned our books and our spirits were quite high. The other classes hadn't got them yet. Why just our class? We really thought the teacher was extra special towards us. Just after the earthquake, teacher Zhang Zhijun spent his time on consolation visits to each of his students' families. As Zhang met them, he sensed the children wanted to read, so he sought out a sponsor and then personally traveled to Chengdu to purchase books, spending two more days personally delivering them to each child. The children and their families were saying, Teacher, we don't have any books. What can we do? Teacher Jiang, how long before we start studying again? These two sentences were the most common. It pained me, and I felt like I had a fire inside me. On the afternoon of May 12th, Jiang Zhijun was directing his students after their lunchtime nap when the ground started to shake. Jiang quickly evacuated all 72 students from the school dorm. He pushed us, every last one, to get out. If we stumbled, he snatched us up. And if someone got hurt, he helped them. That's how we got downstairs to safety. In that time of danger, Jiang never let down his guard. After confirming everyone had gotten to safety, he noticed chemicals leaking from a nearby factory higher up the slope and once again urged everyone to scatter to safety. Jiang's every thought was for the children. He never considered deserting them to return home to his own worried family. I guess they just slowly went home. Three people took one child, three adults to one child shouldn't be a problem. From that point on, I did nothing else. I was just totally focused on looking after these kids. My kid was okay, but these 72 were also my kids, and no less important than my own child. That night seemed like the longest night of his life. Jiang baked farmers for food and sheltered from the rain in a tent. But the sun did, at long last, rise again. Jiang's worried wife returned to the school looking for him, confirming that their family was safe. Jiang personally delivered each of the 72 children to their parents. I was the only one in our family still in Law Sui. They were worried because it was badly hit in the disaster, and my wife came looking for me. I felt really emotional. Then we walked to Yunxi to see my wife's father and mother. My mother-in-law broke down in tears on the evening she didn't see us. At the site of Law Sui Middle School, the once towering 50-year-old building is now only rubble. The high school buildings entirely collapsed, and the middle school buildings were declared hazardous. The famed 50-year-old school was gone, along with everyone's hope. Five months later, the event remains on every student's minds. I'm very thankful to teacher because he helped everyone through those troubles, and he had his own family, but first looked after us, his homeroom class. After such sudden danger and death, Jiang Zhijun now has one special request of his students. I hope my children and each one of my students, I hope that one of them will become a famed geologist and can accurately predict earthquakes. Then, having saved that one person, he or she could then go on to save thousands or tens of thousands. But for Jiang Zhijun, both as teacher and father, his greatest hope is simple that each child might happily choose their own future and seek their own brightest fortune.